What's up everybody? Um, welcome back to another episode of Tales from the Tarot Patch. As you can see, we're not at the tarot patches again, but instead we're on the Y side <laughs> of the island of Maui. And yeah, I flew over to interview who I think is a very talented musician. And I'll let him introduce himself and talk more about what he does. But yeah, we're back on Maui. Right on, aloha kako. Uh, my name is Kamalei Kava'a. Um, from Pakukalo, Maui, and I'm super stoked to be here with, with Ikaika uh, to talk story a little bit with you guys. Yes, uh, mahalo, All right. bro. Um, you mentioned Pakukalo. Pakukalo. I seen that on Google Maps. Like it's like a like a division. Like what is that? It's like, an ahupua'a right oh, here, okay. right here in, within the the moku of Wailuku. Okay. So Wailuku is the moku that we're in right now, yeah. but right here this ahupua'a is called Pakukalo. Okay. But I'm um, even more specifically, it's it's a homestead. Okay. We okay. live on the homestead. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So we're on the Hawaiian homestead today yeah. for this episode, folks. <laughs> so just a question I like to ask all my guests to get a better idea of where they're from and the environment that raised them is yep. yeah where are you from and how was it for you growing up born and raised right here um on this beautiful homestead called Pakukalo, um hawaiian homelands um growing up here was was good uh, we didn't live specifically right here our whole lives um we, we moved around you know here and there when i was a kid but but this was home for for us you know this is one place we always came back to um, my grandma guys acquired this place a little bit over 30 years ago. Okay. Um, and right now we, we have uh, four generations living on this property right now. So, uh, yeah, that's, us, um, a, that's what your mom was saying last mm. night. Oh yeah, first of all, everybody, Brad, this guy is so aloha. He's letting me and my <laughs> homie crash here at his house, like. Automatic. Super hospitable. I, like yeah, and everyone I, that know my family, they're not gonna be surprised. Yeah, as soon as we <laughs> arrived, we were greeted with nothing other than aloha, bro. Right? So like, right mahalo for the warm welcome, Automatic. And opening your home to us, and I really Automatic. appreciate it. Bro. Thank you for coming from all the way from Oahu to yeah. to interview. Always, me. <laughs> always need the excuse for go outer island. <laughs> yeah, right on. So yeah, growing up in the homesteads, bro. How yeah. was that? Like, did you attend the the schools of this district, or you? had to go other places yeah so um growing up specifically here in pokukalo was good um a lot of friends you know um it was like any other kid you know growing up we get the river right over here yeah, swimming yeah. in the river um growing up with all my friends down at the park outside um, all day kind of outside yeah. all day running around the roads you know getting bus up on the roads from riding paddle bikes yeah. skateboard you know but <laughs> auto just like no, no more kid no more kid stuff you know yeah um, which is like any other kids, you know. Um, I attended uh, Kekula Kaya Puni on Maui. Okay. Um, from Puna Naleo until my freshman year of high school. Okay. Um, which for, is- For those of the viewers that don't know, could you just explain what kind of school that is? Yeah, um, so Kekula Kaya Puni on Maui is a, a Hawaiian immersion school. Yeah. Uh, where we, we speak uh, Hawaiian, we learn Hawaiian language, uh, we learn Hawaiian values. Um, and we're, we're pretty much taught only in Hawaiian all the way up until we're about, I think it's like fourth grade, we start learning English. Okay. Like third or fourth grade. But um, it's a Hawaiian immersion school um, here in Maui. And I had the opportunity to attend that from uh, preschool Man. all the way up until my freshman year. Um, and then I moved, uh, moved schools to Baldwin. Uh, that's where I, I graduated uh, in 2014. Okay. Yeah. So going through um, Kulakai Puni, like, would you say that it got you to a level where you were already like thinking in Olelo Hawaii? Like your inner thoughts? Um, I would say, yeah, growing up, growing up in Kayapuni gave me that, that Hawaiian way of thinking, you know, it gave me that, yeah. uh, that values. It instilled all of, the, instilled all of those, those values uh, within me from a young age, you know? Yeah. Um, and it really helped propel me forward in, in everything else, Hawaiian that I did after that, you know, um, and gave me kind of the motivation and the push to to keep doing different male Hawaii, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Cool, bro. Yeah. My bad, I just gotta flip to my questions, my handy dandy notebook. So your family is pretty, um, Tap, I'd say in like the cultural practitician and like the Hawaiian that. space. <laughs> like, 
what was your i guess main values that were instilled to you as a child or during your upbringing i know like i can clearly see family cultural values or or just any values your family push yeah well growing up growing up in in the household that i grew up in uh family is always first you know Um, to this day, we still live together, you know, all my <laughs> siblings and I, to, to this day at 28 years old, <laughs> still living with my siblings and everybody live in one place, but but being together and, and family was always number one, you know, yeah. then um, the church came next, you know, in, the, in my family was, was church, um, going to high pool every Sunday, you know, um, let's edit that, not high pool, holly pool, holly pool on Sundays. <laughs> um, well, you hot, you pool it too. Yeah, yeah, that too. <laughs> But um, yeah, was just like any other family, you know. Um, the the only difference, I guess, that I realize now is as I get older is that we was born uh, to a kumuhula, you know, yeah, and, yeah. which is at the time to me seemed normal, you know. Yeah, it was it was just a normal thing. She's just my mom, you know, and and speaking Hawaiian and chanting, dancing, and singing Hawaiian stuff was normal, you know. It never, <laughs> never seemed like it was anything different until I got older and, and realized that that really was something special and yeah. something that, that I was really uh, fortunate to be able to to have been born into, you know, and, yeah. and something that came was able to be natural for me, you know. Exactly, like, yeah. it was normal for you, basically. Yeah, it was normal, yeah, yeah. it was normal. Mean. So would you say that um, that is what pretty much drew you into like wanting to play ukulele or yeah i mean your musical journey hard hard, hard to kind of to kind of say what drew me into it you know because it was just yeah. there you know like yeah, yeah yeah like it was it was always there playing ukulele singing um my dad sang and played ukulele my grandma guys my uncles my aunties it was just something we did you know so it's naturally i was it was just an automatic, you know, to us, yeah. to us as kids. Was yeah. We just jump in, play ukulele. We jump in, we, we, we sing whatever, whatever's being sung, you know. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't really remember, like, a pivotal moment that, like, like drove me into music. You know, yeah. it just okay. was always a thing, you know. No, that makes sense. Yeah, like, it was just always you, something. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Like you said, you was born into it. Yeah, it was an, it was an, it was an automatic. It's just you know? always an aspect <laughs> yeah. of your life. Yeah, and it's something I thought everybody did, you yeah. know. Yeah. No, speaking on that, it was cool. Just last night, we were all at the dinner table, and then your niece can just bust out her pahu. Yeah, like, yeah. Do the oldie, yep. know what she's doing. I'm and, like, ah. and I look at her, and I think about us, like, oh, man, I remember being that age and not realizing how lucky I was, yeah. you know, to... To know that stuff. To do that at that age, yeah. you know, and, and she do it, she doing them, you know, yeah. she doing them now. It's natural for her to to do that, and it's it's not something odd or something out of place for yeah. her, you know. It's, exactly. she's, it's she's, part of her life. Like, it's part of our life, you yeah. know. And that's something I, I feel really fortunate to be able to, to pass on, you know. Yeah. That that's gonna continue to be something normal in, in my kids' kid. lives. Yeah, and yeah. My nieces and nephews, you know, gonna be normal for them. You yeah, know? bro. That, speaking on that, like my upbringing like was straight farm tarot patch so like I grew up thinking that like all the other kids knew how to do yeah. yard work and stuff <laughs> yeah, too you yeah, know what yeah. I mean so like bro as I got older and like I had to like have a few jobs where I would weed whack and then like my peers would not know how to start the weed whacker yep, and I'd be yep. tripping like I knew how to do this since I was like five. Like what? yeah, <laughs> kind of same same thing like yeah. us. Like we thought everybody yeah. danced hula. We yeah. thought everybody chanted. Everybody spoke Hawaiian. But um, we got older, and realized that we was fortunate. To Definitely be able to have that, through you know? hindsight, I realized how lucky yeah. I was. Not only like to know how to do that kind of stuff, but like to know why yeah. that stuff is yeah. important. It's and I, like I remember being a kid, like kicking and screaming for not singing, you know? Yeah, yeah, My mom yeah. would be like, get your butt up on that stage and sing right now. And I'm like, I don't like singing. Yeah. I don't want to do that. I don't want to chant. I don't want to dance. And and I'm glad my mom always pushed, pushed me and always yeah. forced me to get up there and sing, you know? Because because they, they knew, you know, they yeah, knew, you yeah, know, and, and yeah. now I know. You yeah, know? exactly. So. It's always funny, like, realizing how much your parents know like as you get older because yeah. when you're a kid you think like you got it all figured out <laughs> yeah you're just like little ah. doing no yeah huh? exactly Jeez. bro so coming back to hula that's a big part of your ohana it is. and your life i'd say mm-hmm. like how has that cultural practice like how has that go hand in hand with your your music like did you start singing hula songs or so i would say when you look at it from like a professional aspect, I, I would think yeah. the best way I can explain it is um, 
the hula came first. Okay. Like singing was always a thing, like at home, you know, like we always sang with my siblings, sang yeah. with my, my dad guys. Um, hula was always automatic, but I was a hula dancer before I became a professional musician. Okay. I danced hula first and and I'm glad that I did that first. I'm glad that hula was was my your avenue to was my world. avenue and kind of my in you know yeah my in into the hawaiian music scene yeah. because hula and hawaiian music go hand in hand yeah I, I i can see aspects of my life now when i play music that being a hula dancer first helped me out you know on stage like <laughs> like there's so many instances but but one of them is like now i have the opportunity to play music at mary monarch you know yeah and because i know how it, how it feels to be a dancer I can I can relate better and I can make sure like the timing is is right. I can yeah. make sure that that like the intros and outros is right, you know, and and from the dancer perspective, it gives me a little bit more connection to the music. Um as a hula dancer, you got to be able for to know what you're dancing, you know, you got to know the story behind the song. Yeah. You got to know the translations to them, you know, you got to know who wrote the song. Exactly. The why. And, and all of that helped me in transition into being a musician, you know. Mean, bro. So Another thing that I'm grateful for yeah. that, that happened the way it was supposed to, you know? Yeah, that's super cool. Yeah. Yeah, I took a hula class, I think my like third semester at UH. Shouts out to Kumu Noi Noi Zurumeister. Oh, nice. nice. But yeah, it was a really, I learned a lot, not only just like how to hula, but like why it's important or like yeah, even yeah. the mo'oku au hao of mm -hmm. all of like what Your you're lineage, learning, yeah. who it's yeah. from, yeah. all of that stuff is important. And I feel like, I guess like when people think of Hawaii or Hawaiians, like that's one of the first things they think about, you know, is yeah. hula. Yeah, they get one stereotype too though. Yeah, yeah. Um, the uh, grass skirt, yeah, the coconut yeah. bras, yep. and mm. yeah. Yeah, mm. that's, yeah. Don't, don't, don't think that hula is like that. <laughs> So do you feel like um, you have two different personalities when you sing in like English versus singing in Olala Hawaii? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I would say no. I would say no because everything that I do stems from being Hawaiian first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so if I if I can sing an English song, I can sing them in a Hawaiian way. You know, yeah. I can sing them with the Hawaiianness in me. You yeah. Know? Um, and I think that's important. Important. Um, for for a lot of us, you know, some people think you got to turn on your your English cap, you know, for do this song, you know, turn on your Hawaiian cap for do this song in Hawaiian. But yeah, I, I think I think that doing these English songs or singing in English in a Hawaiian way, in a Hawaiian mindset is important. Yeah, you know? yeah, that, for that's, sure. that's our identity, you know. So I, I wouldn't I wouldn't say two different personalities. I, I carry the same essence of Mele Hawaii with me. Yeah. When, when I sing a reggae song or I sing a country song or I sing another song, you know. Yeah, solid. Yeah. I just asked that because I seen a clip where um, it was this Spanish guy, but he was basically talking and saying how when he, he noticed like when he switches back and forth from Spanish to English, mm. like his personality changes as well. Like mm. he thinks he's a little nicer when he's speaking in Spanish. That's interesting. Or in Spanish speaking countries versus like when he's in his English mode, he's kind of like reserved or closed. Mm. Thought, doesn't really care to talk to people that's interesting that's yeah. an interesting perspective it is it wow. is especially with like learning olelo hawaii now because like i can totally catch myself like trying to english english it out to right, for me right. to understand right. it you know what i mean right. but i'm trying to get to the point where i just think olelo yeah but oh it's so hard when like all you know is English and like, even when you're trying to speak, you're just trying to translate your English into Olelo. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's probably one of the most important things and, and a big barrier that a lot of, a lot of um, Po'e Olelo Hawaii try to get over, you know, is, yeah. is speaking from a Hawaiian mind frame, you know? Yeah, exactly. Which is different from translational speaking. Yeah. You know? that's, that's an important move and I still struggle with that too, you know? Yeah. Um, but. It's a, it's a very important move and a very important transition for for people who are speaking Hawaiian. You know, people yeah. who love Hawaii. It's 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 a different way of speaking and it's, yeah. it's a way that everybody should be pushing towards. Yeah. You know, it's like a whole switch in worldview almost. Yeah. Cause yeah. like mm -hmm. yeah, just breaking down simple words in Hawaiian. We think of it as one way because we learned the English translation, mm -hmm. but like that word has so many kauna and yeah, yeah. deeper meaning sure. than you know. It's kind of crazy, but it's hard to, I, I find it hard for myself now 
at this age that we are trying to learn it i kind of wish like i was in immersion school mm -hmm. or like at least trying to learn it as a yep, kid yep. but yeah hey, it's never too late to start yeah and and we gotta start now yeah you know what i mean we gotta start now and we gotta keep pushing towards those goals we gotta start yesterday <laughs> yeah. yeah that's true too yeah. but we gotta, we gotta start and we gotta get some place with them you know so uh, how do you well you incorporate our culture a lot into your music mm -hmm. do you um would you say that hawaiian culture is like one of the main aspects of you as a musician or would you say that it's like your love for music hmm that's a good that's a good question i would say being being hawaiian and the hawaiian essence is is the biggest aspect and that transcends to the way I portray my love to, mu yeah, to, yeah, to yeah. my love for music, you know? And I feel like being Hawaiian, learning how to sing Mele Hawaii, the way we're taught to sing it, you know, with, with love, with emotion, yeah. you know, with compassion. I, I take that same teachings, you know, and do them in my English songs, you know, and, and it, to me, that's what, that's what makes it Hawaiian, you know, is, yeah. is that, that feeling, the emotion that you bring to the song, you know, and being able to, to do it intentionally too, yeah, yeah it's super yeah. important. So I, I would say it's kind of both. Yeah. yeah, I would say it's kind of both, a little bit of both. Solid. So growing up on Maui, I feel like Maui is like a very, I feel like a lot of, it's way more cultural, um, not friendly, but there's a lot of cultural aspects for your upbringing, you know, like your emergency. A lot of options. Food. Yeah, a lot of options. Mm. Like growing up through your upbringing, what was some of the, I guess, favorite mo'olelo that you've learned? And like what lessons were the main takeaways from it? Hmm. The mo'olelo and takeaways from the mo'olelo. Hmm. Like mo'olelo Hawaii? Or it could even be like a personal story. Um, any instance or even we'll come if back you, to that Let me yeah or even down. if you want to give like mo'olelos of Inoa Hawaii mm. like how places got their names I just love Maui mo'olelo yeah 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 um then we'll come back to now I gotta think about that a little bit yeah Roger, Roger. <laughs> no worries no worries <laughs> could you um maybe share a moment or a piece of advice from your mentor Richard Ho'opi'i hmm that has been impactful in your journey? Yeah, that so for those of you who don't know, uh, I, I got to spend some time with Uncle Richard Ho'opi, who is a uh, Leo Ki'eki -E falsetto legend. Hammer. Um, um, <laughs> who passed away a few years ago. But I was able to spend some time with him and he was able to, to give us some pretty good advice. Um, and one of the, one of the most uh, meaningful advice that he's, he's given me, um, and one that I always, always fall back to is, is when we sing, um, when you sing Leo Ki'e Ki'e, when you sing Mele Hawai'i, uh, you lead with aloha, you know, and, and that's our way of expressing love and sharing love with the world. Yeah. And out of all the things that he's, he's told us, you know, and told me, um, that's one of the things that stuck with me and, and one of the things I always try to remember um, anytime I perform on the stage, you know, or um, that we're the beacon of aloha, you know, and, and we, yeah. get, we have that opportunity for whatever time being on that stage, that's your time to share the aloha with the world, you know, and whoever, with, with whoever's listening, you know, so it's really important to remember that, you know, it's not just about you, yeah. it's not just about your, your pretty voice, you know, it's, <laughs> it's the things that you get to do when you're on that stage, you know, and the impact you have on people, yeah, you know. solid. So. And for those of you who don't know, um, Leo Ki'e Ki'e is a type of falsetto singing. Hawaiian that, falsetto. Yeah, yeah, Hauaiians do, and it sounds freaking hauntingly beautiful yeah. Yeah. Mahalo. you wouldn't expect him to be able to do it but bro you can though yeah. you can yeah. <laughs> so when you sing high like that is there anything you have to do like physically to like because you know how people make the stereotype like oh you gotta cup your nuts or, nah nah no i don't cut my nuts no way <laughs> <laughs> people joke about yeah, it you know yeah, that yeah. time but but um you know it's you know it's crazy learning music i would say the hawaiian way you know from your uncles your aunties yeah the, it's it's 
you you watch and learn, huh? like okay. they don't really explain much to you. Bruh. And and yeah. you ask them a question, and it's just it's just you gotta do them, you know. So the way my siblings and I and a lot of our a lot of my friends learn is is watching and and mimicking, you know, what they do. Okay. Um. So kind of hard for explain like the technicalities yeah. of yeah, them, you know. We course. just we just gotta do them, you know. Yeah. You just do them. You just sing. Yeah. <laughs> So would you say that it definitely like singing falsetto? Cause frick, I, I'm not gonna say I try, but even when I try to sing high, like my voice, it feels like I can't even like make that noise. Like, is there mm. ways of practicing to be able to like achieve that? I guess range. What is that? Oh, I I can hear like my my uncles and like my people who who I look up to like just telling me, boy, you just gotta sing. <laughs> <laughs> Literally like yeah. that, like yeah. boy, you just gotta sing. That's exactly. <laughs> and if you cannot sing, they're gonna tell you you cannot sing. Yeah, you know yeah, what I yeah. mean. <laughs> <laughs> no beating around the bush. Yeah, bunch, yeah, huh? it's, it's kind of hard to explain it. Um, I guess because I, I taught, I, I I teach too, yeah, yeah. A, a little bit. Yeah. Um, and I would explain to my students that. That um, you just gotta practice those vocal techniques, mm. Wh whatever those techniques are. You know, um, listening. You know, trying to mimic it and and just going through it line by line, part by part. You know, yeah. That mimicking process is super important. You know, being able to try and and do what you hear. You know, yeah. Because that's the way we learn. You know, and that's, yeah. way, that's how we learn. Um, yeah. So that was a little bit a little bit tricky for explaining like the technicalities of them, but. <laughs> mean you just gotta do them no yeah i know i know what you mean that's like asking freaking one uncle how for pool weeds <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cool yeah and and you know what the thing about it too is it's not like we just did them you know it's it's, it's years of listening yeah. and, and, and like mimicking. working towards it years of, of trying to trying to do that you know because i knew i wanted to sing from when i was little you okay know? like I, I knew i wanted to sing you know yeah i loved singing you know so it's something that i worked on from as long as i can remember you know like uh. like i like sing like like this uncle you know i want to sing like, like this auntie <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know it sings really pretty you know so from a from a young age i was already like mimicking and trying my best to to sing like them and 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 play like them you know so it, it was years of 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 working on that yeah, you know, for yeah. Me. like repetition yeah repetition yeah. And, and being around it you know i mean yeah i grew up listening or i grew up with my grandpa so freaking i grew up on kalapana cnk country yep. comfort yep. what are some of your favorite hawaiian musicians um for me one my my all-time favorite is is kumukeli irishel mm. you know he's his his way of writing, his way of singing, his way of 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 doing his music. That's my all time favorite. Maui you know, but built too. Uh. Maui built too. <laughs> Maui built too. Yeah. Then of course you get Uncle Richard Ho'opi'i and Ho'opi'i brothers. You know, yeah. with the little Ki'e Ki'e, Palai, You know, people like that. Um, Kui Ohana. You know, and yeah. those are all like yeah. our favorites because because they sing high. You know, they sing yeah. little Ki'e Ki'e. You know. Um, but that's that's the kind of music that we grew up to, and their hula, you know. Mm. A lot of those those artists, like especially Napalapalai, um, it they're they're hula, you know, they're hula songs. So I grew up listening to them when I was yeah. little, you know. Um, so and that, you dance them too, and, yeah. and we dance them too. Yeah. Know? We dance them too. Yeah. Yeah. You're you're um my bad. I had a little brain fart. No, I know, no. You're also part of a music group that is pretty hammer i'd say in hawaii could you talk a little bit about what it's like being in a group and also like having family as part mm. of your group too so which band are you talking about oh no but, uh, <laughs> my bad. oh we're not we're not together anymore oh okay way. but um i don't know you still like talk about them we can talk yeah, about yeah, yeah. okay um formally my brother my brother and i were a part of a band called nova yeah. And um, it was a set of two brothers, my brother and I, uh, the two Juan brothers. Um, and we were able to do a lot, of, a lot of good stuff, you know, with music. Yeah. Um, we released a couple albums. Um, the, the, the dynamic working with, with family, you know, is, is exactly what you think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, a lot of butting heads, a lot of, a lot of like... Um, good and bad. Good and bad, you know, but at the end of the day, we family, you know. Um, yeah. My brother and I play music now, the two of us with my Hanai brother, John Ako. We have a new band. Okay. Um, and, and we play and sing together. Um, and same thing, the dynamic is the same. You know, we, we're, we're brothers, you know, so yeah. we talk to each other like how we talk to each other, you yeah. know. Yeah. Um, 
Uh, but at the end of the day, you stuck with them, man. <laughs> yeah. You, there's, not, there's nothing you can do um, <laughs> except listen to each other, you know, and work through them, you know. Yeah. Um, but um, myself, my brother Kamehameha, and, and my my Hanai brother John Ako, we have a group together now, and, and it's it's going good. I, I love those two guys, you know. Um, we, we get to sing Hawaiian music still, you know. Yeah. And that's that's the main thing for us is continue to to sing Mele Hawaii. I mean. Yeah. So was the inspiration behind the name Navai Eha like why side? Yeah, yeah. So when I, I started the band maybe like eight years ago and it started as a reggae band actually. Oh man. So it was, it was, it was kind of crazy. Um, <laughs> um, and we played island reggae music and some Hawaiian music. Uh, we did like kind of boat, a mix of, of boat. Okay. So like graduation parties, we yeah. used to show up. My brother, myself, and I think like Kaulike Piscaya was part of our group before. Mm. Um, like the three of us would sing Hawaiian music. Then we got caught a full band and we'd play it reggae music after. Oh, okay, So like okay. people would hire us for the full package, you know, and that Me. was good fun. Um, eventually we focused more on Hawaiian music later on, but it started off as that, where we did Hawaiian music and we did reggae music. Um, but the inspiration for that name was we all come from Nova Eha, yeah. which is, um, translates to the four great waters of Maui, yeah? Yeah. And it was told that this place, Nova Eha, starting from Waikapu, so there's Waikapu, there's Wailuku, there's Waiehu, and there's Waihe. Yeah. And it, it was it said that hundreds of years ago, back in ancient times, those four waters fed taro patches from the the foot of these mountains right here all the way down to the ocean. Oh. And it was it was the, the biggest like, the biggest culmination of, of lo'i in, in all of Hawaii. That that's what that's what it was. And it fed all of Maui. It fed up all of this side of Maui. Of course, the East End had their own their own thing going, but on, on this side of, of Maui, this, it was all lo'i, yeah. all lo'i patches and, and taro. And it was fed by Navai Eha, you know, these, these four big rivers and main streams that flow through, yeah, yeah. through this place. That's mean, yeah. bro. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's super cool. So, I guess during your childhood and stuff, what were some of your hobbies outside of music and hula? Outside of hula and music, um, whatever time I did have left, because yeah. hula and music took up all my weekends. <laughs> like, I had after school time, but I was either I was playing sports, you know, and and, and stuff. But mm. outside of of hula and and outside of, of playing music, I I love to go fishing, Me. you know, hunting, um, things like that. Normal local boy yeah, stuff. Normal surfing, Maui. you know, yeah. surfing as an as an as a youngin, you know, um, those are some of the hobbies we used to do. Wow. Um, but mo but I never really have time for too much hobbies, honestly, because yeah. it was, was music and hula all the time, you know. Yeah. Um, but the little time that I had left was fishing, going to the beach, um, surfing, uh, the normal local boy yeah, stuff, you yeah. know. Country yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, oh, bah, last night you was telling us the story uh, when you took your friend hunting for the deer, bro. Could you tell that story? <laughs> that was yeah, a yeah. Cool one. Yeah, so like I said, I, I, um, I actually took up hunting like after I graduated from high school. Okay. Um, was it wasn't one thing that we did as as kids too yeah. much. My papa them hunt and stuff, but we were so busy with like, with like I said, music and hula. Like, we never have yeah. really much too much time to do that. But I picked it up uh, when I graduated and um, we was talking about. Uh, I took a friend of mine from the continent. I took him to the, to go hunt. Um, okay. And it's just it's funny because. Um, we, had, we get plenty of deer here, yeah, plenty yeah. of access deer over here on the island. And um, I just remember blowing his mind um, on the way there to our spot that we was gonna hunt. Before we even got to the actual spot, um, we had hit uh, two deer <laughs> and and one pig on the way there. Um, and after all of that, we had, we took him to, to the spot to go hunting. Um, and he shot his first um, Hawaii access buck. Yeah. Um, and then um, the next day was his flight back to the mainland, sent him home with um, a lot of meat and, and a lot of aloha. But um, it was one of the craziest hunting experiences yeah. he's ever had in Hawaii. <laughs> That's, yeah. no yeah, bro, yeah. that was so funny when you yeah. was, you're like, yeah bro, we hit the first deer. <laughs> and then I, I put the truck in reverse, hit the other one. Yeah. And we're like, can't yeah. bet. This yeah. is not. Yeah. Yeah. Bro, you sent bro home with like almost a ton of meat. Choke me, yeah, yeah. choke me. He had to pay a lot of shipping, but, yeah, yeah. but he was cool with it though. He was cool with it. I sent him home with coolers of meat. <laughs> yeah. So fishing, what was probably one of your personal best catches? Um, 
pool. Depends what you're talking about. Cause it I, doesn't I, need to be like a tronet, like I, I fish uluas, short cast, uh, casting all kind. I, I'd say my my best my best catch would be my first ulua. Me. Yeah, like a 35 pound ulua to me was like 100 pounds. Bro, but that's but still um, a big fight. yeah, it was what that was one of my my all time experiences. You know, um, for people who fish uluas, you guys people know how yeah. it's hard work. Uh, yeah. And a um, little bit of luck too. Yeah, right? and for me, I, I'm not I'm not lucky yeah, when it comes <laughs> to, to fishing uluas like that. So, it took me some time and it took me a lot of time to to get that first fish. And when I finally got them, I was like so stoked. <laughs> was two guys gonna think oh 35 pounds but it's small, but but to me that thing felt like 150 pounds. No, bro. you know I was I was all teat when I had got my first fish. Yeah. Um and and on my own you know with the boys you know yeah. so that that was probably one of the highlights of, of my fishing experience you know. I mean yeah. Freaking I was into fishing for uh, quite a bit. It was a expensive hobby, but my biggest catch is never caught a ulua yet. But yeah, yeah. Kid, I caught like a like probably was like sixty pounds when like one little white pit. Oh, bro! I was fishing at this spot called Castle Point, and it's basically like a old coral reef that got mm -hmm. pushed up by like. Yeah, yep. there's volcanic activity. So you're fishing off of a shelf and it's all jagged rocks and stuff. Bro, trying to get the shark onto the ledge to unhook him was like mission impossible, bro. Right, like, right. I had to time it with the water. Yep, yep. Freaking big trip. Float up. him up. And yep. bro, it was so nuts because my friend that was with me, like he was basically like screaming, like, bro, like, oh, what are we, how are we gonna cut cut the line and throw it yep, back? Like, yep. bro, we are not leaving a hook no, in this shark. Hell no. Like, oh, I literally no. put my hand right with the pliers, right? inside the mall. So, so, so. Nah, that's the way you do them. And man, oh, when I lifted it up by the tail, by, basically it was like it's back cracking. You can mm. hear all the vertebrae just crack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just like, oh, throw nice. them back. But yeah, that was my biggest fish. Nice. I uh, also, well, another personal best was I caught like maybe a four or five pound kala on a pole oh. using limu as nice. bait. Bro, that was legendary. Nice. They actually fight really nuts. Like, cause once they get hooked, oh, they run for like- I bet. Reef, like yep. they just try to look yep. for cover. But yeah, super good fun the fight. But sometimes when I'd be fishing though and I'd catch a fish, like, it would look at me in the eye and I'd freaking, ha I'd let it go. <laughs> like, right, okay. Not me, hell no. Bad. Once you make eye contact, you're dinner. <laughs> dinner, dog. I felt too bad when I'd look into its soul. <laughs> okay, brother, good fight. You can go back. Yeah, that was one of my first, that was my like, favorite ones of all time. Cause I remember, I remember being so stoked for catching Ulo at like 35 pounds, but. Bro, that's to a, me it was like that's a pretty solid to me loop. to me it was the world you know yeah that 35 pounds is a lot we had to we work hard for that fish you know and well you never you talk to him no no i never oh. i never um just brought him home and get the little tail you know yeah I had some plays around here maybe <laughs> my cat got him i don't know but but yeah that was one of the stoked ones that's classic yeah so speaking on your or going back to music your new band what are your hopes for it and yeah what do you wanna what do you wanna get done with it so so the group that i have now it's my, it's my brothers you know so yeah um shoot our our hope and our goal for that group is just to continue to sing hawaiian music yeah. continue to inspire other other people to to sing mele hawaii because there's not too much people um younger than us you know or the next yeah. generation there's not too many of them even interested interested in it, in it anymore yeah. you know and and our hope is that we can continue to to um perpetuate hawaiian music yeah. you know but also inspire other people to do it you know and specifically that band that we have together the trio that trio we we dedicate everything towards hawaiian music you know we we're moving into some more contemporary stuff and i'm um, I'm starting to put together a, a contemporary like island reggae music band too mean, mean, mean. for a lot of the stuff that I'm going to start releasing this year. Yeah. Um, um, and I really like go back to what to me what Nova Eha was in the in the beginning when okay. we did Hawaiian music and we did reggae yeah. island music. You know. Um, so this year that that's the goal for that is is that trio. We focus on Hawaiian music. We keep perpetuating that, but also. Um, I'm working on putting together a band that we do island island music, yeah. um, different genre type of music, and and plenty of originals. It's gonna be coming out yeah. um, at the end of this year for, Sick, for everybody. Bro. Yeah, looking yeah, forward a to that. Yeah, ton of stuff coming out. So fucking let me know. I'll drop the link. Thank you. Yep, yeah, I appreciate that. Out.
Yeah. So what would you say is like some of your methods you use to approach songwriting or composing, especially when it comes to Meta Hawaii? Because mm -hmm. like get choke kupuna police, you know, yep. like, yep. How, like what, what are the so or some sources you use or like incorporating Hawaiian into your work can be challenging at times. Like, it can, it can be. How do you manage that? Luck, lucky for me, I had good mentors who, yeah. who, who have learned the art and, and the techniques of, of Hawaiian songwriting, yeah. hakumele. You yeah. know? Um, there, there are specific things that you do, specific things that you use um, in that process. And I'm, I was fortunate enough to have a few mentors mentor me through that process. Yeah. Um, but when I approach, um, writing a Mele Hawaii, writing a, a Hawaiian song, uh, first gotta have inspiration, some kind of inspiration. You know, if I'm writing it for someone, if I'm writing it for a place, you know, yeah. the inspiration gotta be there first, you know, and yeah. that, that's, that's the beginning of it all, you know, mm. and then you can move into the actual writing process using all of the inspiration that comes yeah, from whatever yeah. you're writing about, yeah. Um, and then there's a lot of different like tools and different techniques you use, like the num like one of them is kauna, you know, dual meaning. Yep. Um, a lot of poetic things that you use um, in hakumele. Um, of course, writing them in Hawaiian too. Yeah. You know, the olelo part is is also super important. But um, for me, the inspiration gotta come first. You know, I gotta be inspired to write. Um, whether it's for a person, whether it's for a place, whether it's for a, a, a time, you know, a, yeah, something that yeah, happened yeah. in time, you know, commemorating time. commemorating times, you know, um, uh, that's that's the first thing that it starts with. Then I move into like normally, like when melody will, will run in my head, you know, I'll mm. be thinking of some kind of melody. Just humming on. Then um, for me, it's it, every song is a little bit different. Um, yeah. Sometimes I have those songs that come to me like in the middle of the night, you mm, know? Yeah. Like, I, I go to sleep with this inspiration. Then I don't really dream about them, I'd say, but I say it wakes me up from in the middle of the night. Yeah. And I, I get all of these things like lyrics, I get this melodies in my head. And those songs usually come super fast and I write them fast. Mm. Like they're, they're done in like an hour or two, you know? <laughs> um, and I have a few songs that happen like that, you know? And, and for me, I know. When songs like that come to me, I know that that it wasn't random, you know. I know that it was intentional for whatever whatever's going on in that time, you know. Yeah. Um, so there was a few of those songs that come like that. There's a few of them that take me a long time for write, you know, like um, my daughter's song. I wrote my daughter when on Mele Hawaii. Um, and you would think that would be the easiest song for write, yeah. Uh, no yeah. way it was so hard for me to write it. And I didn't it took me being away from her to write the whole song. Mm. You know, like, I never write her that song until she was almost a year old, I finished writing the song. <laughs> you know, and um, I, I started working on it before she was born, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I was away from her uh, for f four months, you know? Uh. And that four months inspired me to write her that song, you know? Yeah, and finish um, it up. And finish it up, you <laughs> know? So it comes in different ways. Um, and every song get one little bit different approach, you know, depending on, on the inspiration, you know. Mean. Yeah. Like, how are you describing um, when they come to you when you're sleeping? That's kind of like Inopo. Like kind of, yeah. When the names come to yeah. you at night or when you're dreaming, basically. And, and that's how I look at them, too, you know, like, if, yeah. if, if all of these lyrics, all of these melodies, if everything coming to me super quickly, like, I know that that's not... That, that song is intentional and it comes from our kupuna, you yeah, know? Yeah, exactly. It's, it's coming from them, you know? Yeah. And that's, that's one of those spiritual times for me where I know like, okay, like I believe in a higher power. Yeah. I believe that I believe that our kupuna are there with us, yeah. you know? Cause, Cause I wouldn't be able to, yeah. to write these songs without that, that <laughs> inspiration, you know? And, and there's a lot of instances where, where that happened. Like one of the first times that happened to me was when the whole Mauna movement happened. Oh, the TMC. Yeah, when yeah. that whole thing was happening, like, um, exactly that happened. I went to sleep one night with, with that super heavy on my heart. You know, it was yeah. like a couple of days after the kupuna got arrested. Yeah. And I wrote, I woke up in the middle of the night, like two o'clock in the morning, mm. and I I go to my living room and I wrote one whole song for that. <laughs> that whole thing happened. Yeah. You know, and and that was like kind of one of the. the the first times that that happened to me and then after that it started happening quite a few times and i wrote quite a few songs when you can um, like recognize way. it too and, yeah and 
I didn't know it when it first happened to me, you know, like I never really understand them, but as it happened to me more, as as those songs came to me the way that they did, like yeah. I started realizing like, hey, that's, that I, I realized one, that it's it's our kupuna talking to me, you know, and, 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 and giving me this song. Number two, that the song's not mine. Yeah. That the song is, is intended for, for someone else. It's intended for, for something bigger than just me. Yeah, you know? exactly. And I'm just the vessel to write the song and to, to share it with everybody else, yeah. you know? So, so yeah, it's, 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 it's a trip, but um, um, I'm grateful that, that those things happen to me, you know? Yeah. And I'm able to share that with people, comfort people, you know, um, commemorate yeah. different times in history, you know? Yeah. Um, so, that's one of the coolest aspects of, of Hakumel is, is for me that part, you know. Me, beautiful, bro. Yeah. How come in some Hawaiian mele, like they're speaking in Olalo, but the sentence structure is like English? Well, it just means that they're translating, oh, okay. you know. Um, and, and my mom gave me that, was, who is one of my mentors in Hakumele, you know. She gave me that. I remember when I first started writing songs in Hawaiian, it was very translational, you know. Yeah, and nothing yeah. wrong with it, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's just the stage that you're in of, of Hakumele and of writing, you know. Yeah. We go through different stages. And as I look back at my compositions, I can see all the different stages. Yeah. From the first song that I wrote in Hawaiian, you know, in, in Olala Hawaii, I can see the, the youthfulness. The progression I can the see field. the youthfulness in it You know and, <laughs> and to where I'm at now I'm nowhere near a master You know Or nowhere near Where I want to be But I see the progress You know yeah. And that's important too You know um, Nothing wrong with, with Being translational But yeah. But It's important that we try our best For move past that You know And And Dive deeper into all the The What is the English word Plethora Yeah, yeah. Whatever Of <laughs> The buffet that we have Of Of tools that our kupuna left for us to use, you know? Yeah. And it's important that we keep moving along that path and, and, and using those tools, you know, and learning more. And and you, I personally see the, the evolution in my mm. hakumele, you know, since I first started writing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I think it's important that we just keep moving forward, you know, and keep keep trying to learn more more and more about hakumele to, to elevate our yeah. writing, you know, and elevate um, just, our mele. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So in a lot of Hawaiian songs, you always hear ha ina ia mai ana kapo ana. Mm -hmm. Like, what is the best way to translate that into English? Literally, you telling the refrain of your story. That's 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 literally what it is. So they're saying you're like, telling the ending is it's pp holoka oh it's the ending of the story you know. Okay. That's that's pretty much what that is. So it's just, yeah, it usually is at the end. Ha ina mai ana kapo ana. It's just it's the ending of my song. Oh, I'm, I'm yeah. telling the the ending of my yeah, song. Yeah, yeah. I'm speaking the the refrain Your of the song. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. that's super cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's why it's so common, cause yeah. and that's a very Hawaiian thing to do. Yeah, you know? yeah. Very Hawaiian thing to do. I you even see that in like the old new Peppa and stuff, yep. like yep. that way of writing. And that's important. That that haina that that puana is important too. You know, because it's it's a it's a it's a Hawaiian writing tool. You know, it's yeah. a hakumele tool. Yeah. You know, and and honors all our kupuna from before, you know. I mean, so when you were going through um, immersion school, do they teach you olelo like, like kahulu pepeke pikoho? Yeah. Or yep. aikehe? Yeah, I honestly forget a lot of it, but yeah, they, they, they taught that to us in like elementary. Okay, I mean, yeah, yeah. basically it's just like English grammar structures, but Hawaiian. Yeah, actually I wouldn't say elementary. We learn a lot of the, the grammar stuff. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, like towards the ending of elementary going into like middle school yeah. but yeah we learned all of that kind of stuff but Bro, honestly i forget them honestly uh, my olelo journey is a little bit hard because i did like i went to windward first so i didn't learn any of that like okay okay i just basically learned like oh Oh, you know, you know, mm -hmm. it's the basic entry yeah, yeah, level yeah, stuff. Yeah. So when I got to UH, bro, I'm playing like catch up to like learn all of the grammar structures and yeah, stuff yeah. on top of vocab, mm -hmm. on top of everything. That's why I like I'm kind of struggling right yeah, now. Yeah. But now nah, you can get them though. Yeah, I'm gonna get it. You just gotta be persistent. The more you do it, the more you realize like, oh, it's kind of easy. And you gotta commit to them. You know yeah. what I mean? That's that's the hardest thing about them. Like, right, you gotta be committed to them because it's not it's not easy either. It's cool now because I realize like, oh, I can pretty much say what I'm thinking or feeling Good. in Hawaiian like yep. no matter yep. what like ki manava anu pololiva aka mahope ki ai so 
How would you like to use your platform? I know you um, spoke a little bit about it earlier, like you wanting to, I guess, inspire the younger generations yeah. to be interested in our culture. Yeah. Like, do you yeah. have any, I guess, ideas on how you're gonna do that? I think the way that we inspire our next generation, you know, the the youth to continue to to practice Mea Hawaii, you know, yeah. singing Hawaiian songs, doing Hawaiian things is is by making it normal in our daily lives, right? Yeah. Using platforms like platforms that we use, social media, you know, making it cool, making it something that they want to be a part of, you know, yeah. it's super important, but also trying to bring all of that things that we learned from our past and bringing that into the new and contemporary era too is super important, you know, yeah. trying to find that balance yeah. between the, the things we learn that are that are older, you know, that are, that are kahiko, you know, and yeah. bringing that into the new age and making it, Making it cool, yeah. bruh. Making it cool to speak Hawaiian, you know? Making yeah. it cool to... to Know Hawaiian. Know, to be Hawaiian, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I think... I think, like, as people, like, on social media especially, you know, with followings and stuff, we have the power to do that, you know? Yeah. And to make it cool for for Hawaiians to be Hawaiian, you know? Yeah. And... You heard Hawaiians. It's cool <laughs> to be Hawaiian. Yeah, and... And no matter what stage of Hawaiian you're at, you know, it doesn't matter whether you're you're just learning male Hawaii, whether you're you're a speaker of, of Olelo Hawaii, you're a singer, whether you're your Mahi Ai, Mahi Ai, Lava'i'a, Paniolo, Lava'i'a, yeah. whatever it is, is, is there's there's so many aspects of Hawaii that, yeah. that I think it's important we all respect, you know. Yeah. Um and you you cannot push someone aside because they're not at the same level as you, you know. Yeah. That that right there gonna tear everybody down, tear and us down. That's not tear even us like down, Hawaiian bro. mindset. No, and that's not how you make it cool yeah. for everybody to be Hawaiian. You let people be proud of being Hawaiian, yeah. and as a Hawaiian, you tear other people down. That's not how it works, yeah. you know. You, you got to be more open, more inviting, um, and create one safe space, I guess, yeah, yeah. for people for for be Hawaii, you yeah. know, be Hawaiian. Yeah. And whatever, whatever aspect or whatever part of, of, of Hawaii you are, embrace it, you know what yeah. I mean? And, and we all gotta embrace each other. That's, For that's, sure. that's the meanest thing. Bro, most it must have been thing. like so crazy during our great grandparents' time and our grandparents' time where like, they were just shame, you know? Like being Hawaiian was not cool. It was the opposite. Like people looked down on native Hawaiians at that time. Like Yeah, and it wasn't too long ago, you yeah, know? Yeah, exactly. I remember, my, my great grandma who, who just passed away a couple years ago I remember her um, explaining to me that when she went to school she she didn't know any Hawaiian she's yeah. pure Hawaiian couldn't speak a lick of Hawaiian but she'll go to school and get slapped you know for saying one, one, for uttering one Hawaiian word yeah. that she heard from her dad or her, heard from her mom yeah. and they were afraid to speak that and afraid to be Hawaiian um, so we're lucky today that we can we can be proud Hawaiians you yep. know and um that we can be proud and we have a space to be Hawaiian, you know? Bro, but like you said, it fortunate. wasn't even that long ago. And it wasn't that, it was... Like, there's people still alive today that were feeling it. that. Oh, yeah. That shame and... Oh, yeah. Yeah, being put down for being a little yep. bit darker than ever. Yeah, you know yeah. What I mean, like... Yep. It's kind of nuts now, because, like, oh... I'm, like, shamed that I'm not as dark as my papa, mm. you know what I mean? Like, it's crazy how fast the mindset switched back to, like... Yep, yep. Bro, we supposed to be proud of this stuff. Yep. Not freaking all Gila Gila. Yep. Yep. Solid. So, what is your favorite Mo'olelo? <laughs> and what lessons can we learn from it? Could be Maui, Kanaloa, anything. While you're thinking of that, I will tell the Mo'olelo of Iao Valley. Okay. Well, uh, I might not know it from like the Maui perspective, but from what I've learned, King Kamehameha was on his conquest. He lost to Kahikili before this, right? I'm not, I'm not too, I gotta refresh all of that. Well, anyway, they were fighting in Wyside <laughs> and basically, King Kamehameha and his men made the other army flee through Iao Valley, outside Oluwalu Valley into Lahaina, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah, yep. that's crazy. 
And there's also like a, a Mo'olelo. Wait, should I go back? What did you say about fleeing to Oluwalu? They were um, running from Kamehameha's army. No, I think he just blew cannons down Iyo Valley, blew everybody up and killed everybody. Okay, they're running yeah. from that then. I don't even think, if I'm not mistaken, I don't even think they had chance for a run through Oluwalu. Okay. They were stuck there and he just annihilated everybody with his cannons. Yeah, and then the, there's a ridge right here. Yeah. Above yeah, on yeah. this side called Kauvelo Velo Ula. Yeah. And what that is is it Kauvelo Velo Ula comes from that that story of Kamehameha uh, bombing mm. uh, people with cannons. They were on this ridge bombing bombing um Maui people from the top of that ridge and when it yeah. came dark the Maui people would look up and see the, flash, the yeah. red yeah. Uh, balls coming down from the heavens you know coming fr down from yeah, that ridge yeah, and yeah. the word and the name of that ridge became Kau Velo Velo Ula the, the red fiery balls that are, are, are coming down, down yeah. from from that ridge bro that's a I didn't even hear here of that and I, I learned that uh, from one of my mentors who I, I wrote a song with called Palkukala. We wrote a song for Palkukala together. What do you mean? And one of the things we, we did was we talked about some of the place names right here on these ridges. And there's a ridge right behind us to my uh, right that's called Kauvelo Velo Ula and I learned that story from him. Man. That that during that, that story yeah, when that Kamehameha battle, was yeah. here, one of his bombing sites was from that ridge. Yeah, oh, that's nice. And then that, that ridge became Kauvelo Velo Ula. Yeah. Everybody likes to, um, I guess, shit on Kamehameha for using cannons and stuff. But I don't know. <laughs> oh, listen, I mean, it was gonna happen eventually. Yeah. You know, I mean, like he seen what foreigners had, and he was just like, "Yo, let me get that." Like yeah. a lot of people think that Hawaiians wouldn't have modernized, you know, like if it wasn't for us getting taken over. But like our elite literally were trying to. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I believe that's true. But yeah, the story of Kamehameha's cannons is always nuts. Cause like, yeah. I even heard a story where they ran out of cannonballs. Bro, they was just throwing rocks and stuff mm. inside. And just shooting like shotgun, lava rock shrapnel. That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. Well, you imagine getting hit with that back then? Like, Oh yeah, big trips. Bro. Big trips. Oh yeah, but the ending of the E.L. Valley story that I read was like, there was so much death and blood in the water that the river ran red for a bit after the battle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yup, it ran red and there's also a spot called Kipaniwe which talks yeah, about the, yeah, yeah. The, all of the, the bodies dammy. that dammed yeah, up yeah. the water, yeah. you know? So that, yeah. Bro, that's, yeah, that's heavy. But I definitely love it in Iao Valley. Mm. Like like I was telling you yesterday, it reminds me of like a mini Ko'olau. Yeah, it's pretty inside yeah. there, it's pretty up there. It's always wet, green, yep. freaking yep. nice and cool. Oh yeah. Shoot, I would say one of my favorite Mo'olelo um, is the Mo'olelo of Haloa. Yeah. And, and the way that that Mo'olelo reminds us of our relationship to Aina, yeah. you know? Um, that it's not just, this land isn't just land, you know, it's not just a place that we live, but it's part of us, you know? Yeah. The, the, it reminds us of that relationship that we gotta return back to, you know, exactly, with Aina, you yeah. know? And if everybody lived like that and, and thought about the land and, and our Aina as our older brother, our, our sibling, then we wouldn't be dealing with all the stuff we're dealing with today, you know? For people sure. would, would take it more seriously, you know, and take care of this place, you know? Yep. I mean, not, not run it to the ground like we're so used to doing, you know? Bro, I find it crazy how our biggest selling point in Hawaii is like tourism and like, they're literally coming to see Aina, but yeah. we don't invest anything back into Aina. Yeah. It's like, yeah. what? Yeah. What, like the tourists are coming to see a thing and that's your main economy store. Wouldn't you think to make the thing they're coming to see better instead of trying to build more useless things? Well, you know what it is, is there is that industry's view on beauty is different from ours. Yeah. Beauty to them is, is white sandy High beach, rises. is green, green golf courses. Yeah. You know, and beauty to us is is kalu in the ground. Yeah, food. You know, food on the table. Yeah. You know, food in the ground, not not grass in the ground. You know, we cannot eat on golf course. You know, yeah. cannot eat concrete um, either. So there, cannot eat concrete. So the difference, the problem there is that the difference, their idea of beauty yeah. and our idea of beauty is different, huh? Yeah. 
Going back to the Halo story, bro, yeah. would you want to summarize it for the audience real yeah, quick? Yeah, so, so for those of you who don't know, um, Halo Nakalau Kapalili is the son of uh, Wakea and Ho'ohoku Kalani. Um, Wakea is, our, is the sky father. Ho'ohoku Kalani is the mother of the stars. And, and in Hawaiian legend, Hawaiian mythology, um, they had a kid together. Um, their firstborn son, Halo Anakalo Kapalili, and he was born a stillborn. Um, and when he was born, of course, born a stillborn, uh, they buried him in front of their hale. Um, and Ho'ohoku Kalani, his mother, uh, wept over that grave for, for days, yeah. days and nights. And uh, through her tears, um, watering and, and replenishing that, that soil, that grave that that child was, was buried in, um, this plant grew, which was said to, to be the first kalo ever, ever of, of all of Hawaii. And Ho'oku Kalani and Wakea went on to have another son, simply named Haloa. In honor of... Um, in honor of the, the older sibling, yeah. right? Um, but the beauty in that story is that that older sibling who became that kalo um, was able to feed and nurture the younger sibling. Yeah. And Haloa, the second Haloa was able to, to live and be nurtured by his older sibling. And that story right there reminds me, and it should remind all of us of our kuleana to, to Aina. Not specifically to Kalo, you know, yeah, to Kalo, but, but to all of the Aina that we yeah. live on, that we, that we are fortunate to, um, to be a part of, you know, that, it, that we should take care of it as if it's our sibling. And when we do that, that older sibling, that thing we take care of us will take care of, will take care of us too, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's that, that relationship between us and Aina that, that we all gotta return to. Yeah. And ideally, that relationship is supposed to last forever. Yeah. Like, yeah. as long as we always care for Carlo or our older brother, yeah. they will, he will always feed us, make sure yeah. we're fed on our grandchildren's children's children's children. Yeah, yeah. and that's, that's the moral of the whole story, yeah, yeah. is that it, you can take that same story and apply them to anything, you know, anything yeah. you do in your life. You nurture this thing, whatever it is, that thing will take care of you yeah. eventually, you know. Yeah. Um, and that's why I love that story so much is because it, it, it takes you, whatever you can do, you can start one business, you can raise kids, you can, whatever you do. You nurture that thing, that thing will eventually take care of you, you know. Um, so that's that's one, one life lesson right there that we learned yeah. from our kupuna, you know, yeah. and, through, and through Mo'olelo. I feel like that's a main factor of like why Mo'olelo were even like created in the first place. Is yeah, to, so to they remind could, us. Yeah, to yeah. teach the future. And we gotta be smart, smart enough for- Decipher it. Decipher it and, and know how for apply them, you know? Yeah, cause, cause bro, there's Kauna in everything, bro. Yeah, cause if, if, you, if you look at them literally and think, okay, I'm gonna only take care of Kalo then you can kind of be stuck, you know? Yeah. But you gotta be smart enough and use that same, that same akamai that your kupuna had to decipher that and be able to apply that in the world you live today, yeah. you know? That's, that's important, you know? Hey, bro, we are the modern Hawaiians. Yeah, and we gotta find our way, you yep. know? We gotta find our way. Yep. And, um, yeah, we gotta find our way in this, this age. There's no way we can change what happened to us, you know? No yeah. way we can change the circumstances we're in right now. Yeah. The only way we can change, change them is by the way we move forward, you know, yeah. and the way we take our steps forward. Yeah, beautiful, you know, and, and bro. And once we understand that, then we can get someplace. Yeah, you know? for sure. Freaking, all the buzz around you right now is um, yeah. you going on The Voice yeah, and performing. Yeah. Could you talk a little bit about like what inspired you to go even audition for that? Or like, how'd you even? Yeah, yep. So, um, I honestly, you would think that me pretty much growing up on a stage, you know, whether it was hula, whether it was being thrown on the stage by my mother for singing, you know, yeah. you think I'd be, I, it's, it'd be something I, I like doing, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but honestly, like, I never really liked the attention, you know, so. In my mind, like, oh, being on The Voice was a, like a dream, like, oh, it's, it's something you think about in the shower, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, I wonder how <laughs> Yeah, but not go. something you actually, I actually thought I would have done, you know? Yeah. But my wife actually, like she does, you know, pushes me to, to do things that I'm, com I'm uncomfortable with, um, that eventually will push me 
into different stages of my life that I never thought I was gonna be able to do, yeah, you know? Yeah. And this was one of those instances with her. She, she would sign me up for, um, there's a virtual audition where you gotta like sit in front of one computer and make one like one one minute video. Okay. She signed me that, she signed me up for that thing. Me. And um, it was funny cause she signed me up and she said, you're gonna do it, you have to do it. <laughs> So I'm like, okay, you know, being the good <laughs> husband that I am, yeah, nah, yeah. nah, I just said, okay, I'm gonna do them. So, anyways, I did the, I did the, the virtual audition, uh, and thanks to my wife, you know, pushing me to do it, uh, they called me back, um, and the rest is history. You know, the rest is history. The rest is what it is now. You know, yeah. um, being able to to represent Hawaii on, on, on a on a platform that, that for me is huge. You know, Bro, and be able is. to to share more share aloha you know with, yeah. with the rest of the world yeah you know, and that's that's what i feel like we have to offer you know yeah. is, is is aloha you know and, and the more we can spread of that the, the better this world gonna be the better we're gonna be you know yeah so. for sure bro that's so classic she just basically did you know yeah. about it or i kind of had a feeling but 15 minutes before she's like your audition is in 15 minutes you oh, get ready, you know? bro, that must so i was like oh much. but but good for me like Fortunate enough for me, being a hula person, that's automatic. Like yeah. Your kumu gonna ask you for do things five, ten minutes before. Yeah, yeah. You gotta do them, and you just gonna do them, you know, because it, that that's automatic yeah. for you. You know, you yeah. just train that way. So for me, that's kind of how it was. I can never have time for be like salty with her for signing <laughs> me up. You know, yeah. I, I had two choices. I could be salty, or I could I could go kill it. I could go and do the damn thing. Yeah. You know, and. and and shoot, that's what we did. We did the damn thing. Hell know? yeah, bro. <laughs> and we're still doing them. Definitely. Know, so. Me. Yeah. What was yeah. like, I mean, like, did you have to, well, she did it, but like, was it like an application? Like, yeah, pretty much like an application. Um, you gotta fill out like things about you and a little bio. Okay. And then, um, bro, like, they give you one minute and 30 seconds for singing your best song. Oh, mean. Yeah. So it's yeah. kind of like, Bro, like you, la like you had to beat a bunch of people to even make it to the show. Yeah, oh. pretty much. Yeah, yeah, Bro, pretty that's much. Crazy. Imagine like how much contestants applied and yeah. like, you and got it. Brian, the coolest part, the coolest part about the whole thing, is I sang on Mele Hawaii. Man, yeah, that is yeah. super killer. They probably and that's what got me the call back. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Crazy. They was probably like, oh, this guy's exotic. I, I let you in on a secret. Nah, <laughs> um, I actually did them. She, we can my cut wife, this out the park. Nah, nah, no, no. My wife did this for me three times, bro. Oh, mean, she mean. Had, that was my third time auditioning. Okay. And I told her, okay, I, I, I told Sierra, I told her, if I can do them. I've been doing Mele Hawaii this time. Yeah. The first two times I never I never do Mele Hawaii because you know you, you get yeah. that stigma I didn't yeah. know. But the third time I did on Mele Hawaii and that's what got me to call back. Bro, that's yeah. even cooler. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah, so Yeah, and third um, time's a charm, huh? Yeah, I guess so, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so like, that's why I was kind of expecting it more this time. Cause yeah. I knew she like I get the little email, you know, the email you can sign up for an email, you know, to get so they let you know when they're doing virtual okay, okay. like casting like calls, you know, time, yeah. Yeah. yeah um, so like I kinda got the email and I was like, oh watch, bro, so you're gonna sign me up and they're not gonna be able to say no. <laughs> sure enough, it happened again, then I was kinda a little bit more prepared for him, but but yeah, I mean I still wasn't expecting for get called back, you know, I just yeah. figured whatever, just do them. Then fifteen minutes after that video and when post was they, they called me back, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we can yeah. wait real quick. What is that, Mokulele? Hey, it's flying kind of low over there. <laughs> well, this. Mokudilele. <laughs> you ever fly Mokulele before? Yeah, I did. Cause, I talk about delays. Yeah, delays, but frig, it's only like a fleet of what, three planes? Yeah. They probably get like 10 employees. Yeah. I cut them slack. So what artists or genres do you draw most of your inspiration from? Hmm. I feel like I, I went through different stages of drawing inspirations from different artists in my life, you know. Uh -huh. I remember being younger, like was Roots, you know, Bob yeah. Marley, was Bob Marley and the Whalers, was like Gregory Isaacs, you know, because my father was heavy Roots, you know. Morgan Harrison. So that's where I drew a lot of my inspiration as a kid writing music, you know. Um, then was Napala Palai, Kelly E. Rachel in Hawaiian, mm. you know. Um, and now today it's, I don't know, 
for my music. I, I get plenty of favorites, you know. Um, yeah. But the past few years, I've been loving country music. Ugh. Country music been like <laughs> heavy for like maybe like. I don't know the past seven, eight years now. Ever since heavy Maoli. country music. <laughs> nah, 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 I'm just uh, before them actually, but um, just joking, Greg. I, I draw plenty of inspiration from the way they write yeah. when they write English songs, you know. Um, yeah, yeah. Right. I guess today would be like country music is my is heavy for me really? right now. Yeah. I like that one song by um what is it Blaine I sing Molokai on my mind. Oh yeah, yup. Yeah. Yup. I got to meet Blaine. I got to spend some time with him too. Shouts out Blaine. Yeah. Yep. Killer song. Yup. It definitely has a country vibe, but like yeah, everything is sure. about Molokai. Yup. And it's oh yeah. Hawaiian country music is pretty good, honestly. I'm not yep. gonna cap. <laughs> yup. So, um. Would you say that country is like what you listen to mostly outside of Hawaiian? Shoot, music right now, yeah. Like yeah. I still listen to the roots reggae. You know, I listen to to a lot of Hawaiian music still, but yeah. but I've been I've been listening to country music pretty heavy mm -hmm. for for several years now, and um, that's kind of my go-to. Like I jam them all the time. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Comfortable music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Different mm. stages I have in my life. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I like I like I had the rap phase too. You know yeah, what I mean yeah, in high yeah. school, but. The Crazy, wife. like different phases in my life. I listen to different stuff, uh. bro. That's exactly how I am. Yeah, I feel like everybody goes through that. And then it's nuts too, because when you re-listen to like genres you used to be into, like it yeah. just reminds you of that point. In oh, that, life. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. And that's that's the beauty of music yeah, too, bro. Yeah. Like whatever music you connect to in that period of time, bring back that song. Feeling. When that song pop on, man, that takes you right back to all Literally, of that. Literally, you know? bro. Yeah. yeah, that is yeah. the beauty of music. Oh I yeah, think. for sure. Kind of you hear certain songs give you goosebumps. You're just yeah. like. Ah. Yup, make you cry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yup, yup. Funny. So, does the pressure ever get to you? And like, how do you deal with nerves and anxiety while um, preparing to perform? Ha, pressure, pressure does get to me sometimes, you know. But um, and you get the anxiety, you get the nerves. But I, I remember being given this advice that if, if you're nervous it's natural it's normal mm. you know when you're not nervous you should be worried yeah yeah you know the nerves kind of keep you on point you know keep you focused yeah. um but then i try not to think about it too you know yeah yeah i, I, I feel like once i step on the stage especially with, with the voice you know like you're super nervous right before you go on before those doors open like sweating you're you're <laughs> You're like, Butterflies. your mind's going crazy. You're trying to remember everything you practiced. Uh -huh. Then it comes to a point where when that door opens, you got to trust everything you practiced, you know? Yeah. Um, and for me, one, once I get on that stage and I start, it's it's like, um, it's like I'm, I'm, I'm in my own world. I'm in my own, I'm in my, my element, I guess you mm. could say, uh, when the I'm on the stage. State. Yeah, then, then I feel at home when I'm on stage, you know? Um, but leading up to them, yeah, you get plenty of pressure, but the way I deal with it is I just, um, tell myself that I know having those feelings is normal. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then um, not worrying too much about what I'm gonna do in the stage because I already know what I'm gonna do. You yeah, know? yeah. We practiced it enough yeah, to know yeah. it and and trust. Muscle trust memory. Right? You gotta trust them. Yeah, you gotta trust yeah. them. Yeah. Solid. So, what is your favorite song to perform and why? What my favorite song to perform? Right now. Yeah. My island Maui, and. Like I said, when I when I'm in different stages of my life, there's different songs that hit differently. Yeah, and right yeah. now, that song is 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 um, perfect um, yeah. for many reasons. One of them is when I spent so much time away from home. That song always took me home, you know. Uh -huh. um, then with all the, all of the stuff that's happening specifically tomorrow, you know, yeah. with the fires, with all the others, like you know, that's happening tomorrow, yeah. you know, right now. Yeah. Um, that song just just there's something beautiful within it, you know, that, that evokes all the love that I have from Maui, you know, so yeah. that's that's literally my favorite song right now, and I sing that at every gig, <laughs> you know, um, but it it reminds me of all the good that Maui has to offer, yeah. you know, and, yeah. and all of its beauty, um, and when you sing songs, yeah, when you when you utter words, you you're speaking life into yeah. whatever it is you're singing about, you know. Yeah. So every time I sing that song, I'm I'm speaking life into Maui, you yeah. know, which is what we need right now, you yeah. know. So for sure, that's my jam right now, my island Maui. Yeah, uh, my next question after that was like, what was it like to be able to not only represent Hawaii on such a huge stage, but like specifically Maui, especially during that time. 
Um, shoot, it was, it Heavy, still feels yeah. surreal. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you get that pressure and that, that, um, that weight on your shoulders, you know, like, cause especially being from Hawaii, you know, you, you carry it, you carry that weight with you. You carry your friends, your family, everybody with you. Yeah. yeah. But, um, I felt proud, you know, I was, yeah. I was a proud Maui boy up there, you know, <laughs> specifically Maui, you know, cause, um, we're a small island, you know, like, yeah. like I mean, you choke people on this island, but we're, we're a small community here and to be able to, um, to represent such a beautiful place with beautiful people and, and share all the love that we have to offer from this island with everybody else, you know, yeah. was, was pretty cool. And the coolest experience was when I was up there, a lot of people complimented me on how nice I was, you know, and, and mm. how, how much aloha and how much love yeah, I, I, I shared with people, you. you know. And what one of my proudest moments was being able to be that example, you know, mm. and be able, when people tell me, oh, you're so nice, Kamale, like, um, they give me compliments to that. I, my answer to them all the time is we're all like, we're all like this at home, you know? Yeah. Like, like this is who we are. This is who we are, you know, where yeah. I come from, you know, and it's natural to me. And I remember being up there, like with, with all of the people from the continent, like um, we'd sit down at dinner one night and I order food and I share with the whole table. Uh -huh. I share, I share my fries with everybody, you know, you <laughs> know what I mean? Like I wait for everybody to eat. And I remember one of one of my friends up there was like telling me like, oh, come on, like, I've never experienced somebody doing this. I'm like, what? Every time we eat, you're sharing your food. <laughs> Every, like, if you get your food first, you wait for everybody. And I told him, you know what's funny? Funny you mentioned that, like, at home, it's natural. We just yeah. do that. We share everything we get, you yeah. know? Family style. Um, that's this is how we were raised, you yeah. know? And, and it was kind of a proud moment for me to be able to exude that kind of aloha, you know, and, yeah. and share something that, that, it made me realize not everybody gets to experience the same things we experience, you know, like it's a cold world out there, yeah. you know, and people don't care and about to be able, Brad, to be able to show them like genuine love, you know, genuine yeah. aloha, like this, this is just how we do it, you know, here in yeah. Hawaii. Love was, without expecting anything. Yeah. And to me, it's automatic, yeah. you know, and it's not something we think about, but to be there with people who aren't used to that, yeah. you know, and for them to kind of like notice that made me proud, you know, and, and yeah, made me super proud and super grateful that, that I grew up the way that I did, you yeah. know, that, um, yeah, just that, that was one of the coolest experiences. And, um, and of course, we're proud Maui people are. Huh? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, it was me last night, and me and bro was in the room, and he was like, oh, bad, it, they're like super nice and cool, yeah. <laughs> I was like, bro, straight up. Like, yeah, bro. I was, I was expecting you guys to be aloha, but like not basically already family, it feels like. <laughs> That's how, bro, and, yeah. and it's funny, like people gonna watch this and they're gonna know. Cause, yeah. Like throughout my whole life, I always had someone living with me. That little room you guys staying in. <laughs> it's the guest room. Bro, that wasn't, that was my room before. Oh, okay. And I had me, my girlfriend, and my two friends living with us all in that room throughout <laughs> high school, bro. Freaking always had up. somebody leaving it with me. That the front door was never locked. Yeah. You know, everybody was always welcome to come to my house. You know, Classic. and everybody who who knows me and spent time with us, they they call my mom, mom. Yeah. You know, they call my grandma and grandpa, Tutu and Papa. You know, yeah. um, and that's that's just how how it is, and that's how it kind of should be. You know, a yeah. lot of the times. Yeah. Um, but everybody know this house. Everybody know the code for the front door. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if classic. the thing is even locked, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. That, um, but yeah, it, this this house is open to everybody and that's how it's always been. Yeah. Yeah. So there was a time on The Voice where um, you got a little emotional talking about indigenous peoples. Yeah. Like, and it was during a hard time too, so. Yeah. What does your culture mean to you and how important is it for you to be able to perpetuate Hawaiian culture? Um, my culture is my identity. Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's, it's part of who I am, you know? Yeah. And, and that's why it's important to me, you know? It, it's part of who I am. Um, and it's even more important for me uh, to be able to share that with the rest of the world, you know, to let people know that we're still here, you yeah. know? Um, I remember Uncle Del always says it best, um, the, the proud, we still around brown Hawaiians, you know, yeah. um, that we're still around, we're still here, you know, um, and we're not going nowhere, you know? Yeah. Um, and I think that's that's super important. Um, and that's a big part of me. And I, I, I get emotional naturally because you think about all the things we went through, right? Yeah. But um, 
it's more important for us to focus on the things that we got to do, mm. you know, in the future then rather than dwelling on the things that already happened to us, you yeah. know. Um, so just being able to, to, to let the whole world know that we're still here, you know. Yeah. Like, it's crazy that we're the minority in, in Hawaii, <laughs> you know. Um, but being able to step on the stage, you know, and, and, and be on a platform like that, um, to let the, the whole world know that we're still here and we're not going nowhere, you yep. know, is important to me. Um, yeah, that's that's super important. I, I I remember looking through some comments on Facebook and seeing some backlash about that, you know. Mm. Um, but to me, that no matter, you yeah. know, that no matter because all of the indigenous people from all around the world that I made proud, you know, standing up there and being yeah. a representation of it, you know, that that's what matters to me the most, yeah. you know. Uh, reigniting people's um, indigenous, you know, within yeah. them, you know. Yeah. And that's, I guess that's the hope to it. With being on this show and being on this platform is is reigniting everybody's want to to return back to their their roots, you know, yeah. and, and and being indigenous, you yeah. know, being indigenous, and um, yeah, just super proud and super stoked to to um, be able to use that platform to do that. Yeah, you know? they put you up against uh, the other Hawaii boy. Yeah. Oh yeah, the heartbroken, bro. Was it hard for you to not sing somewhere over the rainbow like Brada is? Oh yeah, yeah, because that's how we sing them at home. Yeah, yeah. And Israel is one of my biggest inspirations. I forgot to mention. That. I don't know why I forgot, but <laughs> but Israel is like the icon of Hawaii. You know, like yeah. everything he stood for, everything his messages in his song. You know, like the person he was is is everything that we like be. You know, as yeah. as Hawaiians and as musicians today. Not only did he sing and and perform really well he was he was a hawaiian you yeah know? his advocacy and he made everybody else proud to be yeah. hawaiian you know and that's that's what 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 is my favorite about israel you know but yeah. was was super hard for not seeing him like him you know because um both gabriel and i uh, night and day out of the two of us you know he's <laughs> he's north shore surfer boy you know and and um I'm just on Hawaiian from the homestead, you know. Um, yeah. So it's kind of two different worlds, two different meshing, Hawaii's. you know. Yeah. And he sing totally different too, you yeah. know. I sing totally different, but we had to meet somewhere halfway, you know. Mm. Um, but it was definitely kind of hard not to sing it the way Israel sings it. But um, you know, we did our best to do it justice, and and um, I mean, man, it was super crappy that they put us together yeah. so early. <laughs> Color my. No, they put us together so early. Um, but I'm super grateful for the, the time I got to spend with him because he's yeah. such a good brat and, and he became like my little brother, you know, yeah. on, that, on that show. And it took us going to Los Angeles, you know, for me to chat. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was, an, it, was an, it was a good experience and, and I love that kid to death, you know. Yep. So what was some of the most valuable pieces of advice you received from your coach, Chance the Rapper? Um, one of the most valuable pieces of advice was he, he advised me to continue to be myself mm. and be who I am, authentically who yeah, I am, you know? Yeah. And that hit for me because in, in the industry, you know, you can get lost, you know, in, in and trying to conform to, trying to, conform to what is you. cool at the yeah, time, yeah, you know? Yeah. And, and it's really hard to, to be steadfast in your beliefs and be steadfast in who you are, mm. you know? And he, he reminded me that, that you need to continue to be yourself and be authentically yourself, you know? Man. Which is a hard thing for dude today, you know? Yeah. Um, but that was probably one of the best pieces of advice that he gave me. Me, you know? Was that coming after like um, one of your performances? It was, um, so we got to work with him first when we, during the battle yeah, rounds yeah, yeah. with me and Gabriel. Um, and that's the time when he, he had give, given us that advice. Solid. Yeah. Was that three hat from him? Yeah, yeah, it was one of, so every coach gives like their artist something, you yeah, know, on the like blinds. Yeah, to claim them, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, the, the, the three hat was, was one of them. That's super yeah. sick. Yeah. Yeah, I reckon that's his brand, yeah, so yep. yeah, that. Yeah, solid. So, was the diversity of Team Chance um, able to open up your perspectives to new musical possibilities in any way? 
Oh yeah, oh yeah. It definitely opened up my perspective to different genres of music, you know, and yeah. and also opened up my voice to to things that I never even know I could sing, you mean. know. So that was that was cool, you know. Um, and now I I, I kind of dabble with different genres, you know. And, yeah, yeah. And found some some things that I like, you know, and some some yeah, and songs can, like, that I like. Put and your some, own sound on it. And some sounds that I like with my own voice that I never even know I had, you know. So mean. that that was one of the coolest experiences. Oh, so like unlocking you, that. Yeah, you, you know? actually did learn from like because oh, you were sure. already a singer, you know what I mean. But like going into that type of competition yeah, where yeah. you have like a coach, you learn you learn from the coach, you learn from your peers. Yeah, you know that was the coolest experience that I learned from from our coach too. But I learned even more from my peers. Yeah, you know? like hanging out with people from from all over the country. You yeah, know? Um, just opened up my whole perspective and broadened my perspective on music you know yeah. so that's one of the biggest takeaways from that whole experience mean yeah, yeah i was gonna ask what was one of your biggest takeaways from that the whole for sure yeah. yeah solid so what was one of the biggest challenges that you Shoot. had to overcome one of the biggest challenges was being away from my family oh yeah it was the first time i i was away from them ever yeah. you know and and, and daughter my daughter was, was like only like seven born. months yeah, you know yeah. six seven months uh, not even seven months she was like four months when i left you mm. know and um that was the hardest thing for me i, I ever had to do i um i been in my wife for going on 11 years this year and i never had to spend that much time away from her you know <laughs> so for me bro i was like a big baby man yeah. and when i think about those times bro, it gets all emotional um plus not only being away from her you know but being away from my daughter too yeah and only seeing them through facetime that was rough you know yeah. and that was something i had to overcome and had to get through um but that was the biggest challenge was being away from my family, you know? And, yeah. and I literally literally was doing them on my own, you know? Yeah, and, and like during the time- Right, you miss everybody. You miss, I miss my, my siblings. <laughs> I miss, and I don't ever miss my siblings. <laughs> yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like, right, you get with everybody. <laughs> but I miss everybody. I miss our family family dinners, bro. I just was missing everything. And and that never went away mm. the whole time I was there, there um, doing this competition, you know? And um, So it was like, you get to have your phone on you? Yeah, yeah, I have my phone and stuff. And oh, so I'm freaking talking to them all the time must have helped. Yeah, so I, I talk to them every day, like three times a day. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, but, and then while I was there, you know, the fires happened, you know, yeah, while I was exactly. there. Yeah, um, So, yeah, just missing, missing my family. It yeah. gave me a bigger appreciation for home, you know. Yeah, definitely. It, that, that saying that you never appreciate something until it's gone, <laughs> bro, that was like, the biggest thing for me when I was up there, like I never re appreciate the sunlight over here. Bro. Different from the yeah. mainland, you know, like even California, air quality. California, you know, the sun, even the sun is different, yeah. you know, bro, like being able to walk out to the front of my yard and see the ocean and you know, all smell the ocean. Bro, that, that kind of stuff was hitting me and, and um, it made me super grateful to have such a beautiful home, you know. Bro. Smiling at people in Target, you know, waving at auntie and uncle <laughs> at, at Walmart, you know, that never happened when I went to the store, yeah. you know. It was like <laughs> everybody in their own world, you no know, take time for hold the door for each other, yeah. you know, like no shakas, you know, yeah. Like, yeah. no smiles. Like <laughs> it, it when I came home, bro, it made me like super, super, super grateful to be to be here and and yeah, I just it was it was when I opened it for me and made me really appreciate this place. Mm -hmm. Like I never ever gonna leave this place because of that. Yeah. No matter what, you know what I mean? Like that experience made me just even more rooted here, you know? Yeah. It made me wanna raise all my kids and grandkids <laughs> and great everybody. Like I like them all stay here, yeah. you know? Bro, I feel the same way whenever I go continent or like, yeah, by the third day, I'm just like, frick, I like go home. <laughs> like. I'm good for visit, you know. Yeah, and I love visit, I love to visit, you know, with my family, you know, and have good make those memories. But, bro, when you by yourself and yeah, it's not it's not the same. And me, I'm not a I'm not a super like outgoing person, I, like, uh, um introvert kind of. But when forced me for make friends, yeah, you know, yeah. now I get choke friends, you know, from the continent. Yeah, but that's that's um, good though. But yeah, it wasn't it was a big learning experience for me, and I'm glad I did them, you know. Solid. I'm glad my wife was holding them down here, you know, with her with her with her brand new baby. Yeah. And one dog. Yeah. You know, I mean, and pigs, I had pigs at the time too. <laughs> My wife was feeding pigs, feeding dogs, feeding babies, you know, while I was <laughs> singing on the stage, you know, and, and trying to make them better, better impression, you know, on, on our on our family and trying to move things forward for our family. So 
she's the real MVP, bro. Yeah. People look at me and like congratulate me, you know, for all my all of my success, but but she's the backbone of it all, you know. Yeah. So that's beautiful, bro. Yeah. Not a lot of men would admit that. that I mean, it's true. And if, <laughs> if you're not one man admitting that, then <laughs> scrub. Yeah. For true. real. Uh, <laughs> I mean, if you get one solid lady, you know, if you get one solid girl, yeah. and and you're not acknowledging her, then. How you better that, start acknowledging her. Yeah, yeah. How does that saying go? Like, behind every successful man is, is like a, a solid woman. woman. Yeah, yeah, strong woman. And I, I believe that with all my heart, you yeah. know, because I have a solid one, you know. Yeah. And I literally wouldn't, wouldn't have been able to do anything that I do today without her. Yeah. Because even, even in high school before I met her, I, I went through on trip where I never like playing music. Uh. I wasn't playing music, you know. I, I never like do any of the stuff. I never like dance hula. Uh -huh. But, but meeting her, you know. She re, re sparked the flame. Uh, she re sparked a lot of things for me, you know. Bro, that's good. And um, I say it all the time. She, she, she's the reason why I, I am where I am today, you know, because she keeps pushing me out of my comfort zone, you know, yeah, keeps yeah. pushing me forward to do things that that I don't like doing. Yeah, you know? yeah. And to this day, I still tell her I don't like do this. I don't like do that. Then I gotta remind myself, you know, like. If I'm not pushing myself forward, you know, there's no way we're going to be able to accomplish all the things we like do, you know? Yeah. And yeah. I credit her for everything, you know? So. Mean, bro. That's beautiful. Yeah, guys. This man right here fell in love with his high school sweetheart. Automatic. Married her. They have yep. a beautiful daughter. And it's such a <laughs> just beautiful example of, like, what young Hawaiian men should aspire to be. Yep. So, yeah. I had good examples. <laughs> my, my grandparents over 50 years yeah. my parents over 30 something years you know or about 30 years together yeah. and um and that's the goal right now you know is to continue to create your own platform to make it make it cool for men to be good men you know yeah um, be good husbands yeah, be good yeah. fathers you know that's what we need more of in this world you know definitely um, you can definitely see the results of the absence of strong men in the households that's why yeah and and even beyond just the strong men, you know, being a faithful husband, yeah, you know, yeah. being a good dad, you know, to your kids, um, especially in Hawaii, we see a lot of a lot of a lot of the effect of, of that, you know, not having a good dad, yeah. not having a good husband, you know, but um, it's worth it, you know, it's worth it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's worth it to be to be that, you know, and 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 we need more of those in in our homes in Hawaii nowadays, you know. Yeah. Um, and I hope I can inspire, you know, more more men to be good men, you know. Yeah. Good fathers, good husbands, good brothers, you know. Um, Cause we need them. Yeah, definitely. We need them for sure. So, who are some artists that you hope to collaborate with one day? Oh, shoot your shot, bro. Who are some artists that I hope to collaborate with? Oh, I don't even know where to start. There's so much people in my mind. <laughs> you let me just pick one or top favorite. <laughs> Hmm. Let me see. Everyone gonna think that Chance the Rapper is my answer, yeah? But, yeah, yeah, but yeah. shoot, bro, honestly, John Legend was was a huge inspiration in my music, me, my writing and and my English music, you know. Yeah. Um. So, if you're listening, John, <laughs> and you like collaborate, hit me up. <laughs> yes. Sir. Hit me up, please. Me, that would be a fire song. <laughs> that would be killer. Yeah, that would be killer. That would be super cool to, to um collaborate and do something with him. You know? Yeah, for sure. Fan girl over here for <laughs> sure. Freaking guy. So, what does I guess a better way to frame this question is like through your upbringing, how has your ohana defined aloha? Like, what is your guys' definition of aloha? Because I definitely felt it as soon as I came. <laughs> Shoot, I would say it. In our family, there's a lot of different aspects that, to us, encompasses aloha. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and number one is is always feed people. Yeah. <laughs> always make sure nobody come to this house hungry or leave this house hungry, you know? Yeah. Feeding feeding people that's number one in our family. Like my tutu, bro, I don't ever remember having to worry about food, you know, because my tutu always made sure we had food and my friends had food, uh. you know. When somebody loves you, they're gonna feed you, yeah. right? My yeah, house yeah. gets automatic. <laughs> um just being kind, you yeah. know, just outright being kind, kind to people. Um what else? 
opening up not only your home but your hearts to a lot of people you know mm. that's that's what what i grew up knowing you know is that that this house isn't isn't just our house it's everybody's home you know yeah. and when people come making them feel welcome and making them feel like they're at home too you know yeah. um that's super important in our family and and i think those three things is is what aloha is to us you know feeding feeding the people you love you know yeah. being kind to the people that you love and and welcoming welcoming them into your home like like they're your own you know yeah that's some of the, the really important things that i grew up knowing and and was second nature to me you know and to me that's what aloha is beautiful yeah. bro well, I thank you for inviting us into your home, yeah. your beautiful family. Thank you for being here. I appreciate it all. Mahalo for your time. You're oh, yeah. all. I know you're busy with all that's going on now. So <laughs> thank you I'm for glad. having me, though. Thank you for having Bro, me. Thank man. you for coming all the way to Pocucalo to to come talk story with yeah, me. Appreciate you know it, that. bro. For real. I freaking yeah. I definitely was interested, not in like yeah, any weird way, but. Definitely been wanting to talk story with you. For yeah, a while. yeah, yeah. I'm stoked we finally made it happen. Yeah, for real. I'm glad we got to do it on. Yeah. Why side dog? <laughs> oh, I never showed this up for years, but. <laughs> right on. Ahui ho, kaku.